August has been the month where we've seen an estimated half a million people travel to Drogheda in Laos to enjoy the 2019 flag Kjol Naharan. With this in mind, we've decided to discuss the history and debate the popularity of Irish traditional music and see, is it cool? Is it cool? Johnny B, traditional music, lad. Yes, first exposure. When did you first come across Chad? Very early, I would say, in primary school. In primary school, I suppose. Because there's always one kid from the country who's able to play some form of a trad instrument. And in my case, like, my friend Darren actually was class on the banjo. Now he just pulls his own banjo. But, like, <laughs> at the time, he was like, do you know, it's weird. And it's, gra- it's a great thing at the same time in Ireland. But kids are tiny. Like, these little four-year-olds and baby infants. And they're like, ba bang 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 playing away the banjo. And I'm like, oh, my God. I, like, I was eight when I learned... How to tie my shoelaces <laughs> And this kid's Bopping away in the banjo When was it, your first exposure? Yeah it's at home I think All those kids Who uh, are good at trad When they're kids mm. They get it at home Probably yeah I was raised on Joe Dolan And Garrett Brooks So <laughs> I was more I was more likely To be wearing a pair of Cowboy boots and spurs Than uh, playing the banjo Because You have You grow up with that impression Of trad That it's like Owl lads Woolly jumpers Pints You know fell, fell You're selling who, it You're selling it Fellas who look like they used to be in the Ra. That's that's kind of your impression. <laughs> that that is that is the negative impression. Like trad when you're when you're a kid, unless you're playing trad, you think trad is born. Mm. Nobody is like, oh, trad is deadly, unless you're actually in it. Like, yeah, well, I think like when you're younger, like you're probably subjected subjected to going like to play for sports clubs and that. And you know, obviously, weird people go to the scouts, and then you know, some people join Kyoltis. But I, I I don't know was it I don't know was it too expensive that my mother didn't want to buy me an instrument mm. or or what was it? Did but you never play? You see, in primary school, when we got to four class, they eventually made us all buy tin whistles right. and learn. And this poor woman, Joan Murray, was the music teacher, and she was I tell you, the woman had the patience, the saints, because for two hours a week she'd come in and teach us tin whistle, mm. and she'd start like. You know, in the far corner and say, okay, now, did you do your homework? Now, play a dawning of the day for me. And someone would go. <laughs> and then it'd go to the next person and they'd do this. And like, there was 37 in that class. <laughs> so by the time it got to the far corner to me, I'd say that woman was just like, I'm going to shove that tin whistle. Um, I never, I never took that. I can, I can play a dawning of the day now and I can play <laughs> And I also learned Fly on the Wings of Love. Do you know that song? <laughs> Fly on the Wings. <laughs> used to think I was... <laughs> Popping it away there with the whistle by a right man. So were you any good? I could play a very, very small bit. I was also, I was always fascinated by the Bowron. Yeah. But like, when you live in a small house, you know, you don't want to be playing the Bowron. And even my nanny, my nanny's a great woman, um, God rest her, who was an absolute hero and the most patient woman I've ever known. But she couldn't stand the sound of the tin whistle. And neither could the mother. So when I went to secondary school in first year in Ross Cray, they all made us learn the tin whistle again. Mm. Now, three years of learning it in primary school, you'd think I'd have got the hang of it. <laughs> I hadn't. So I went into first year and the same thing, two or three weeks in, right, come on, show me, practice it there. Teacher made me do it in front of the whole class. Absolutely crap. So she said, right, give me your journal. You're getting a bad note. And she wrote in my journal, Jonathan must practice the tin whistle 10 times every night and then signed. So I had to get it signed by my mother. Yeah. And like I was fretting because the mother would go crazy if I got in trouble in school. <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm still afraid of the woman to this day. And I went home and was like, oh, I got a bad note, mammy. I didn't mean to get it. Like, you know, I was crying. <laughs> Handed her the journal. She read it and just said, don't fucking bring that tin whistle anywhere near me. She signed it. Like, so she signed it saying she, that you would rehearse she, and then banned you from playing in the house. Yeah, she hated it. She hated the noise of it. <laughs> and like, she, she's right because I was crap, you know. But when the tin whistle is played nicely, it's it's beautiful. But, you know, it's right up there with the squeeze box as, as devil's music. Oh, as a squeeze box lad is hard, you know. Even Nathan Carter is a very attractive man, but even he, he you know, when he plays the squeeze box, it knocks him. He's a ten, and then when he plays the squeeze box, he's fucking. He's only three. Or, he's only a three or four lad. Do you know your man downtown, Mad Patsy, who plays? Ah, lad, he plays it. He's a fella downtown. He like a one man band. He'd be in the front bar of the hotel, Mad Patsy, and he plays the he plays the piano accordion, does he? Yeah, I think, but he can play it behind his back. Oh Do you know one of these lads? And he'd be Patsy for listening You're too loud lad You're oh. fair loud If you're inside In the front bar At Caro's Hotel When I was doing The panto years ago We, we went in Like after the panto show You'd all go for a night out And I went in With one of the guys From the band And, and Patsy was giving it socks now And it, it's great Like but it, it, As Johnny said Like the, the 
the speaker was at <laughs> any louder and it would have went through the front window and your man came in and said well I tell you one thing if the devil played music he'd play it on a squeeze box <laughs> But trad can be lovely, can be lovely. Do you have a favourite trad instrument? I, I like the mandolin. Really? Yeah, I like it. It's a nice sound off it. You know, I do like that. I personally love the illum pipes. Mm, me too. Yeah. They're cool, yeah. They're, if you hear that and play it in the illum pipes, it's like, ah, oh, there's going to be a fight. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah but oh, for me, the illum pipes are a bit, a bit, a, a bit of death about them. What, the, the sound of death? Oh, yeah, I've heard the illum pipes at funerals before. Yeah, and bagpipes. Yeah. Yeah, they would be used to play a lot of lament tunes. Yeah. So, yeah. Make you think about your life. <laughs> That's the last thing I need. <laughs> Jeez, I'll be gone insane. They're very difficult. I have you all here. I don't know how anyone plays the illum pipes, right? Very complicated instrument. It has five parts. There's the bag, the bellows, the chanter, the drones, and the regulators. They sound like soccer fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but the thing about trad... We were debating this earlier as to what is trad and what is not trad. Yeah, can, can, can I give you the definition? Go on, give me the definition so, of traditional Irish music. Ciotis, the foremost movement preserving and promoting Irish traditional music, says, right, it can be tricky to pin down an absolute definition for Irish traditional music like any art form. It will mean different things to different people. For some, it's a relaxing set of jigs or reels at the end of a long day. For another, it's the background rhythm behind a set for Cayley dancing. Another person might remember a Shano song sung by his grandfather's. For others, unfortunately, it's that annoying group of musicians in the corner distracting from the match on the telly. And I think that sums it up. It is something else to everyone. You'll have the trad enthusiasts. And the older I've got, the more I, I, I learn to appreciate trad. I was in Devitt's in Dublin one time and I was out for a, a, no, a quiet drink. I wasn't going, you know, I wasn't losing the brain or anything. I was just out for a couple of pints. Yeah. And I sat upstairs in Devitt's. And this lad was like, do you mind if I sit in there? I was like, I sit where you want, like, but... And then I was just thinking, hey, why is he sitting beside me? Like, there's nobody else upstairs here. He could have sat anywhere and he chose to sit beside me. And another lad sat in beside him. And then a third lad. And I was like, what's going on here? And it was only when I came back from the Jacks and they were halfway through, like, you know, Star of the County Down, <laughs> that I realised, these lads are, there's a tread session on here. And you, and were, was, sitting, you were sitting in the middle of it. I was sitting crack bang in the middle. <laughs> so I obviously got up and moved. And uh, I just watched it from afar. But I loved it. I, it was really class. Like, but... That that is trad. That is proper trad. I would I would assume Johnny you and old Sashun. Yeah, Sashun. But to me, if there's no words in it, I don't I don't like it as much. I like words in my songs. But singing, you know. Well, you mentioned the star the star of the county down. Yeah, that wouldn't be trad trad. What? Yeah, they, there's diddly eye and fiddles and flutes and you know. Not necessarily. What what is trad? So you're you're you, talk, you, talk, you mentioned it earlier. Um, the Cayley music, say yeah. If you t- talk, say the most famous Cayley band ever is probably Kilfenora. Yeah, everyone's heard of the Kilfenora. The Joyce Kayley. Country. I'm not as familiar with the Joyce Country <laughs> Cayley band, but the Kilfenora Cayley band from Clare. Like Cayley music, say is probably very big in Clare Galway and that, and that's made for dancing. So if you're going to Cayley, you're set dancing all night. Siege of Venice. Yeah, love it. That that's your ballpark, hmm. right? That's Cayley music. Then you have the kind of session, a few lads sitting down playing reels yeah. and, and you're not up dancing. You're Hornpipes. I mean? Hornpipes, Kerry Polka is the whole lot. I was talking to a few lads who play trad and they said you could definitely tell. If a fella came in and started playing a tune, they'd know where he was from. Go away. Yeah, and the same fella, or like the same tune could be played by someone else. Mm. But the, the Kerry lads would have an old... Two the tricks they do. To carry polka, like I remember trying to learn that on the tin whistle. Yeah. But it's fair tough because it's uh, it's like you all your fingers are on it, and then there's only like you take off this one. I just couldn't get it. <laughs> I, 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 it sounded lovely when it was playing right, but I but could never get polka it. Polka is a bit of a carry thing. Yeah. Do an old polka there. Do an old polka, right? But my, so we talked about those songs, like the Star of the County Down, Fields of Atten Rye, that mm. kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not really trash. If you we, we talked about this earlier, right? The Dubliners. Yeah. Before the Dubliners, everyone knows the Dubliners, you know, a black velvet band, Lou Kelly, all that. Yeah. Before them, you had the Clancy Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Without the Clancy Brothers, there's no Dubliners. Okay. Clancy Brothers with the white yarn jumpers. Yarn jumpers, but yeah. <clears throat> they went to New York, friends with Bob Dylan. The folk was blown up in America. All that one man and his guitar type stuff, you know? And the Clancy Brothers were part of that. Okay. And they got on all the American TV shows. 
singing all these songs. Brennan on the moor, Brennan on the moor. And Bob Dylan stole that song and wrote his song, you know, Rad Willie Rad, roll Willie roll, wherever you're gambling now, nobody doesn't know. That's a good Bob Dylan impression. Yeah, good. that is a good Bob I'm Dylan impression, that. isn't it? Yeah. So even like the parting glass that Ed Sheeran sings, yeah. the Clancy's would have made that famous. Okay. Not they didn't write it, but they would have made it famous. Okay. And Bob Dylan has a version on the parting glass is the last song okay. on one of his albums. So that is more folk. Right. Then the Dubliners, that's part of the folk revival, man, of Dublin in the 60s and 70s. So you're telling me the Dubliners and the Clancy Brothers aren't trad. They're folk. Yeah, it's Irish folk. But like, but what? the crossover then is like moving hearts. Take Donal Lunny, right? Mm. He can play the bazooki or the mandolin and be all diddly eye, and then he'll go and back Christy Moore. Yeah, so that's, mm. and that's magic. Yeah, now Christy Moore's not trad either. Yeah. I, d- I don't know. There's not more traditional than, than Ronnie Drew so- sogging a pint of Guinness <laughs> and playing Black Velvet Band. Like, that's traditional to me. Maybe it's not traditional music. But to the hardcore... How can you tell? Like, how can a normal person on the street tell? When they hear a bit of diddly eye and the flutes and fiddles and that type of music, they just say, that's trad. The Wild Rover, all that. Yeah. Mm. That's, yeah. that's but, trad to... But to the purists, like, if you were doing the flat and you are competing and singing... Yeah. You wouldn't be singing Starry County Down. You'd be singing some old lilts like. Yeah. I, I don't think, yeah. I don't think they're like a pure art form, but say like the Chieftains, right? The Chieftains are. Yeah, trad. Trad. But then on the Late Late Show special that the Chieftains did, Van Morrison came on and performed the Star of the County well, Down. Fuck, he's not trad anyway. <laughs> you know, but it's fascinating. And yeah. like, that like can do. lots of famous artists have collaborated with the Chieftains. Like um, Mick Jagger did the Long Black Veil. Is that the right name? And then Sting did uh, Mogila Mar. Mar did it, da 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 da. Magic. That's good still. Roxanne. It's gone, it's gone now. It's, it's gone, gone now. now. It's, it's, gone now. it's left now. But I, for me, that's how I think trad will survive is by being a bit more open. Okay. But people who are really into trad, the trad. Um, the hardcore the extremists fish, yeah the fish nados yeah the continuity <laughs> trad right uh, like I was talking to some people who play trad a lot a lot of trad right mm. and they see trad music as being the music of the working class as being the music of the living room and the session in the pub and they don't see it as being a career mm. and to people who are big into their trad if you want to make a career out of playing traditional music you are either going to teaching and I and I quote, or you sell out. So Sharon Shannon is selling out. Oh, Sharon Shannon is one of the except like Sharon Shannon Planet. They're the people who have broke through. That's like winning the lotto. Okay. Mm. But I mean, you end up playing in like River Dance or Celtic Woman or this kind of stuff, yeah. and it's great. But it's pretty cheesy. It's not really trad. I thought River Dance was like I. I've oh no, seen, it's a great show. Yeah, but I've seen River Dance and like that's not that like. Traditional. I was expecting, you know, do, 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 all in a straight line now yeah. for a good hour, like, and I get a good buzz off that. There was fellas doing backflips and, like, <laughs> one lad done the worm. Bruno Mars. Yeah, I did, honestly, there was more hip hop than there was river dance, like. So, so, I, Even, I, like, a lot of the good trad musicians probably get picked up by, like, country acts. Yeah. And you're playing fiddle or banjo, but you're playing with, like, someone like Nathan Carter or, do you know, country yeah. Irish yeah. and stuff. But try it on its own. A lot of them see it as we're playing sessions and that's it. Sogging a few pints and playing a bit. Yeah. Because I got into it with a few people about the trad session, the etiquette. Mm. Um, I was in a pub in Galway recently and the trad session was on and I got talking to the barman. I said, what's the crack of the trad session? Yeah. He said, there's three lads out there getting paid. They could be getting 30, could be getting 50, 60 euro. They run the session. Mm. And anyone else who falls in, if they're good, they get a pint they're very good they get two points other than that they might get half price points right and oh. anyone can join in but if you're bad you kind of be shunned you'll yeah. be, t- you be given the old look the devil <laughs> leave it out lad that's tough lad that's, that, that, that is tough but I it's mean, not like it was that like you could go in and get free points all night it's not to go anymore but could they not just make trad cool like you know like when I went to the Gwail talk trad was kind of a novelty I suppose in that you'd be doing a bit of Kaylee dancing yeah and then you dance to like you know Madroline. do you remember that song <laughs> Go on. Oh, me, oh, oh, me, oh, 
Jolene. And then it goes like that. But it's like the Macarena at the Quail Talk. Like, there's a little dance and all yeah. that. Like, that's, that's cool. It's like line dancing kind of mixed with trad. Like. You only do that because you're at the Quail Talk. You're not going to do that down Morrissey's Barrel. I would. I'd do that in a nightclub, lad. The I mean, Coppers doing the draw. I guarantee you, yes. they play the draw lean in Coppers. I, gar- I guarantee you here now, if they played that any weekend in Coppers, you'll have lads and girls doing line dance in Coppers. That's actually, this is a call out now to Coppers. Play Madroline this weekend, <laughs> and I'm telling you now, lads will do it on the dance floor. I, 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 can, I can promise you that. The Siege, the Siege, Siege of Venice and, and Kaylee dancing is grand, but like, one, I, I kind of I fell out all over it a bit. With Siege of Venice? Yeah. Why? I wasn't, ah, I had no running with this fella on the field before, and um, we weren't seeing eye to eye, you know? It's a couple of unpleasantries um, exchanged. From, from Sport from sport, yeah, yeah, and stuff and, uh, and other stuff. And then I went to a wedding, yeah, and it was a massive Siege of Venice. And I okay. was like, and at the time, I was loving the Siege of Venice, I was buzzing off it. Like, and we'd done the Siege of Venice, and you know, they threw up the arms, and I went in underneath it the whole lot. And then someone had someone had fucked it up along the way, so it wasn't by girl by girl. And I was standing opposite <laughs> this fella, and we hadn't spoke. I say in a good year, and you know, the last time we left, it wasn't on great terms. And then I had to wheel with him. <laughs> and the two of us kind of looking at each other. And, and then, to be fair, in the end, we kind of laughed about it, you know. But I tell you, it was hairy for a while. I thought he was going to wheel me out through the door. Oh, so are you saying the Siege of Venice brought you back together? Maybe. The Siege of Venice can sort out Brexit. <laughs> okay, look, but if people are going to do the Siege of Venice, you need to know it. Because yeah. when I used to play in the wedding band, all the brides would be like, oh, you have to do the Siege of Venice. And then none of the crowd knew how to do it. Yeah. I'd go around teaching them. Right. The thing about Trad now... Where does Trad live? Well, it lives in pubs. and It lives it in the pub. It lives in the pub, probably, yeah. And it lives in the corner of pubs and lads playing Trad sessions. But it's kind of been funked up a bit. It's kind of been, like, it. obviously, the, the ginger hand of God has touched Trad. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Ed Sheeran has, you know, done Galway Girl, which I don't care, lad. Maybe it's maybe the, the Trad extremists will have me over this, you know. They'll throw Guinness in my face or something like that. But, like... That is kind of traddy, you know, there's a bit of diddly eye in that, and it's nice. And maybe yeah. maybe that's the way forward for, like, instead of saying, oh, no, 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 God, no, don't do that with the trad. Maybe they should, you know, <laughs> let go a bit. Let trad spread his wings. And maybe yeah. if he wants to do a bit of Ed Sheeran, the course, you know, look at the course. They sexed up trad big time. Bar Jim. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Poor Jim. <laughs> Poor Jim. <laughs> there, there is, let's be honest, there is a small bit of trad snobbery. Yeah, it's like any art form. Is some people yeah. are purists, and then some people sample from it and have a lot of commercial success, and mm. then the purists get quite jealous. That's who we're trying to be. <laughs> 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 we're gonna rob a little bit of tread and make money. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the day of the session is nearly gone. Like I was talking to people who were at the flak hall, mm. and they'd be a session would break out yeah. in a pub. And then it'd turn seven o'clock and the publican would come over and say, sorry, lads, you all have to go. I have music booked. Mm. Aslan are coming on there. Yeah. You know, you have to break up the trad session. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. You see, the problem is the etiquette with it. Is that like, you know, in order for trad to really nicely be observed, everyone else needs to shut up. Yeah. And it's hard. Now, I've never been to Jim DeMills, which is a sin as a Tipperary man that mm. I've never been there. So Jim DeMills is a place that opens up mm. on a Thursday. Thursday, once a month, I think. And uh, or is it every Thursday? It's every Thursday. Every Thursday. Wow, well, how have we not been there? But he, uh, one of the boys were saying he went up now, and he had no interest in music, trad or not. He just went up to Sog Pints, and he said, "Oh, she can get a word in up there." Yeah. If some fella starts a song, everybody shuts up. So there's proper etiquette in there. So yeah. I think like trad will prevail in places like that. But again, like you try and do trad in a busy pub where the public wants to make a few pound. I I seen it in Belfast. I went to this pub. And the place was hopping, like a real quirky place. And down the back, in the corner, I turned, I turned the corner, and there was four lads having a trad session. Mm. And I said, lads, I'm standing 20 feet away <laughs> for the last pint, and I didn't even know you were here. And they were like, yeah, they just like to say that they have trad. We're not even mic'd up. <laughs> <laughs> this is huge. Brilliant. So look, how does, how does trad get cool then? How, do, how does trad get back? People who are playing trad now, young people, are feeling really good about it. Mm. They're feeling confident about it. Like, it's kind of cool to be sending your kids to Gwail School and it's cool to be having your kids being able to play a traditional Irish instrument. I think it's like, like we talked about hurling in Dublin has become kind of a middle, upper class thing almost. Oh God, yeah. And trad is a bit like that too. It's gone full circle where 
Trad used to be played in the front rooms of houses and poor people had a whistle or they had a fiddle and you could play. And then, of course, De Valera and all passed the act was in the 1930s, the Cayley Act, where you couldn't have a session unless there was a priest present. Jeez. Yeah, and then it moved to the dance halls. It'd be the opposite now, you'd be trying to stay away from them. <coughs> and then after the dance halls, you had the show bands and that almost killed off the Cayley dancing. And then the Dubliners brought it back to the pub where it had Trad and Folk has lived since. But that's the one thing about your kids. Mm. Once they turn teenagers, where are they going to play trad? The pub. In the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Uh, we chatted a fella recently who knows his stuff and he's well up and he said, country music is going to decline. The next big thing is going to be Kaylee music. We heard that. We heard that mm. from a good source. Kaylee's back. Look, 500,000 people attending the flat Yole in Drada. It's serious. There's actual competitions going on in the flat, down in the school and in the hotel function room and all. And then at night, Pure mayhem. Wow. So fair play to TG Carr yeah, and all their coverage yeah. of the FLA. Mm-hmm. I was talking to, I can't even pronounce her name now, Dirn Nitlachan. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad attempt, yeah. You, you have it spelt out phonetically and, yeah. you, and, and the fact that you still can't pronounce it is amazing. So. <laughs> and she also said to me that the boys who won the Cayley Band competition, the Shandrum Cayley Band, they're going around like they're playing county. <laughs> <laughs> wearing wearing flat tracksuits <laughs> and flat jerseys. Do you get, do you get Kaylee gear? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, people. Hey lad, you play Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> when I grow up, I'm going to play Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> people of Ireland, keep the trad alive, right? Keep it alive. Let us know your thoughts. Where is trad going? Any good trad stories? Send them into podcast at the two johnnies.ie.